This is a continuation from the direct substitution lesson. This is solving limits analytically. Um, there's three ways to solve limits. One is numerically, and that's including using a table, usually in the calculator. Uh, another is graphically. That means you actually look at the graph, either on paper or on the calculator, to solve the limit. Finally is analytically. That typically means using some form of algebra or some paper pencil method, basically. So there's the, the first method you should always try analytically is um, direct substitution, and that's in the previous video. Now the next three are called dividing out, rationalizing or rationalization, and the common denominator method. So first, dividing out. Uh, another word for this one would be factoring out. Um, you should always try direct substitution first, but if you notice, look what happens here. If we take this negative 4 and we plug it in for x, we get 0 in the denominator, and that's not going to work. We cannot divide by 0. So the solution to that is to factor. The top factors to be x plus 4 times x minus 2. If you need to review factoring, feel free to pause the video and kind of think that through. And then cross out the x plus 4s, and now we're just left with x minus 2. Now if we try to plug in negative 4, it's no problem. Negative 4 minus 2 gives us negative 6. So our answer for that would be negative 6, and we have found the limit. Okay, in the example below that, we see the limit as x approaches 3. And again, if you plug 3 in, you get 0 in the denominator, and that's a problem. If you get 0 in the denominator, then you can't divide by 0, so it doesn't exist. So to, to stop right there and make a point, we are showing when we plug in the numbers that the function does not exist at those points. So in that first example, the function did not exist at negative 4. However, the limit did. Um, limits and functions aren't necessarily going to be existing at the same time. So in both of these examples, the function does not exist at our point, and we know that because when we plug it in, we get zero in the denominator, but our limit is going to exist. Uh, what that basically means is you have a whole. So on top here, if we factor, we get x minus 3, x minus 4, and on the bottom, if we factor, we get x minus 3, x plus 5. So then cross out the x minus 3s, now if we plug in 3, 3 minus 4 is negative 1, 3 plus 5 is 8. So we get negative 1 eighth for our answer. Okay, so now we have the third example, same process. You try to plug in negative 2, always try, and we get something that doesn't work because we get 0 in the denominator, so then we factor. And fortunately, there is something we can cancel out, and that allows us to plug in negative 2. Negative 2 minus 3 gives us negative 5. So if you're familiar with factoring, this should be pretty straightforward. It's really just a matter of factoring and then canceling things out. This next example is a little tougher. Um, it's possible that you may have memorized um, what the difference of cubes is and how it factors, but probably most of you haven't. So this one isn't easily factored. It is factorable, it's just not easy to do, not like the previous three examples. So if that happens, then you need to try something called long division. Because what we're really doing, a fraction, is just dividing. So we're dividing x cubed minus 1 by x minus 1. Now one thing you don't have to do, but I would recommend, is we're actually, there's a lot of terms in between missing. We have an x cubed, but there's no x squared, there's no x, and then there is a constant term, the minus 1. So for the sake of the division, it'll be a little easier if you put in a 0x squared, a 0x, and then the minus 1. So it's still just x cubed minus 1, but just kind of as placeholders, we're putting the 0x squared and the 0x in. Okay, so if you can remember four steps, you can do long division. It's divide, multiply, Subtract, bring down. So first we divide. We do x cubed divided by x. x cubed divided by x would be x squared. Now we multiply. We do x squared times x minus 1. So x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 1 is negative x squared. Now we've divided and we've multiplied, so next we subtract. 
we do x cubed minus x cubed, which is 0, and then 0x squared minus negative x squared, so that's positive x squared. The last step is then to bring it down. And we're just going to repeat those same four steps every time. So we divide. x squared divided by x, that's x. Now we multiply x times x minus 1, x squared minus x. We subtract. Make sure you subtract the whole thing. x squared minus x is 0, 0 minus negative x is x, and then bring down. Now we divide again. x divided by x is 1. 1 times x minus 1 is x minus 1, and it's perfect. We end up with no remainder. So now we know what this fraction equals. If we divide x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1, we get x squared plus x plus 1. And that allows us to plug in our 1 for x. We get 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. Uh, in my experience, you will not see very many that require long division, but they do pop up every now and then. So I wanted to make sure you were prepared. But most of your examples will look like this page here. By far, the ma vast majority will look like these. So the next method is called rationalizing or rationalization. Um, the thing that you know that helps you know that this is the method you want to use is when you have square roots. If you look at the previous four examples, none of them had square roots, but both of these here do. To solve these, you need to use the conjugate. The conjugate is the same thing, but with a change sign. So we have square root of x minus 2. We multiply by square root of x plus 2. And we do that to the top and the bottom. Now on top, I'll go ahead and tell you, it's going to be easier if you don't FOIL, if you just leave it the way it is. On the bottom, you do want to FOIL. Square root of x times x. Here, there we go. Uh, is x, and then positive 2 times the square root of x, and negative 2 times the square root of x, and then negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Well, if you notice, these middle terms cancel, and they should. That's the whole point of the conjugate, is to get those middle terms to cancel out. So I probably won't even write them on the next example, because I know they're going to cancel out. So I just end up with x minus 4 on the bottom, which is perfect, because then I cancel out the x minus 4s, now I can plug the 4 into the square root of x plus 2, and my answer is 4. Finally, on the last example for this one, uh, again, we need to multiply by the conjugate. The conjugate always goes with the square root. So notice on the first example, it was the denominator. On this example, it's the numerator. It's now on top of the fraction. Again, you just change the sign. So I multiply, let me use a different color, make it easier to see. Um, 4 plus the square root of x. So I just change the sign. 4 plus the square root of x. So this time, I do want to FOIL the top, because that's the one whose conjugate it is. And I get 4 times 4 is 16. And the middle terms cancel. 4 times the square root of x, 4 times negative square root of x. Those will just cancel out. And then negative square root of x times positive square root of x is negative x. And on the bottom, 16 minus x and 4 plus the square root of x. Okay, 16 minus x cancels. We get 1 over 4 plus the square root of x. Make sure you leave that on the bottom. I know lots of people are tempted to move it up top since everything else cancels, but it has to stay on the bottom. Then you can plug in 16 and get 1 eighth. Okay, the final type is the common denominator method. The thing that tells you to use this particular method is when you have fractions inside of fractions. And you do exactly what it sounds like. You find a common denominator. So you look at 1 half and 1 over x. Their common denominator would be 2x. So this one needs an x, so you multiply it by that top and bottom. This one needs a 2. So I end up with x over 2x minus 2 over 2x, all over x minus 2. So on top, now that we have the same denominator, we can combine them into a single single fraction, and we end up with this. 
Okay, now you may at this point be able to see that the x minus 2's will cancel. If that's not clear to you, then just look at it this way. We really have a fraction on top, and if we put this over 1, we have a fraction on the bottom. And to divide fractions, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So then, hopefully it is clear that the x minus 2's will cancel, leaving you just 1 over 2x. And if you plug in 2, your answer will be 1 fourth. Okay, last example. I know this video has been a bit long. Thanks for bearing with me. For this last example, we have 1 fifth minus 1 over x plus 5. We need to multiply this one by x plus 5 over x plus 5, and this one by 5 over 5. So we get x plus 5 over 5 times x plus 5 minus 5 over 5 times x plus 5. Don't forget, it's all over x. Now when we combine these on top, they have the same denominator, so they can be combined. We get x plus 5 minus 5, so that's just x. We have a fraction over a fraction, so we multiply by the reciprocal, canceling out the x's, leaving you with 1 over 5 times x plus 5. Plug in 0, and you get 1 25th. All right, that concludes the analytical methods for solving limits.